the thing is, is those organisms grow. You got to remember, pathogens are secondary opportunists. They're not the the, the main team. These guys are bench warming third string losers. However, they do. They look for opportunities to do what they do. And healthy plants are not their opportunity. A pathogen cannot eat a healthy plant. That's the other cool thing. I mean, you got all these balance systems in nature and it's brilliant. Pathogens can't digest sugar. They do not have a pancreas. They can't process the sugar. It will kill them. But they can process incomplete nutrient deficient compounds. And that's what a sick plant is. Okay, so I'll tell you how they figure this out. It's another really cool system. Fire away. So that will help your insect pressure. Absolutely. And what Ed was talking about, look at this right here. Look at your bricks reading. Okay, everybody's got a bricks chart. Okay. And so you've got what you call here poor, average, good, and excellent. Now, any time, and we have these BRICS meters, okay? And they're really cool. How much is that? These are like 295 bucks, okay? But what you do, I mean, these are really indispensable, especially for you guys that are gardeners. But the really cool thing is, is you can take and squeeze. So we have these super duper vice grips, okay? And you put the plant juice in here, or the plant part in here. You squeeze it down, put a couple drops right on here. You press this button, and it will give you a reading. So you can... Sugar, it's sucrose. It's measuring the content of sucrose. Okay? And what happens is, sugars and minerals parallel each other in the plant. If you have low sucrose, you have low, low mineral content. Okay? If you have high sugars, then you have high mineral content. They don't form separate from each other. And so when, when you, look at, you look at this meter, you can take something and you can squeeze it, put it on there, and you can tell where your plant is at any given time. And if it's down there in the poor or average range, it's calling out to the insects, come and get me, boys. I'm your kind of dinner and it's going to happen, all right? However, when a plant has got a high bricks, high sugar, high mineral content, because remember, we can't form all of these different compounds without trace elements, okay? When we have those high sugar contents, okay, we, the insects won't eat them because they can't digest them, and it actually will kill the insect. The highest readings I found on store-bought tomatoes of all the ones I've checked was barely a four. And so where, Abe, where is a four on our magnificent schedule? <laughs> Poor. Poor. So how many guys like store-bought tomatoes? Everybody. Good. If you ain't got, got any, you got no choice. We, you don't have a choice. But, the but, but how's, how's the flavor in them? Not, not good. They're, they taste like cardboard. They look like a tomato, they act like a hockey puck, and they taste like cardboard. Try a corn then. <laughs> they're worse yet, they're strong. <laughs> well, you can tell. Your tongue is a bit of a refractometer. When something has no flavor, it's mineral deficient. And so we think, oh, this only applies to fruits and vegetables. No, it does not. It applies to meat. It applies to pork. It applies to steak. If your steak has no flavor, your animal had too low mineral content. Remember, I can form structure, 
but to have flavor and nutrition and medicinal properties, I have to have lots and lots of other minerals. I only have to have nine minerals to form structure. I have to have 60 or 70 or 80 minerals to run functions that put flavor, nutrition, and stability into plants. And this is all things. This is food. This is meat. This is the same. You want a great tasting steak? Get the minerals into that animal. So, so the, the amazing thing is we're back to minerals are driving all kinds of systems in plants. With no flavor, you have no mineral content. And so how long do your four bricks tomatoes last hanging around the house, Abe? I didn't eat them. I threw them out. <laughs> well, <laughs> we did check our carrots in the garden last year. I walked in and the gardener asked me what I thought. I asked him if I could bring my bricks meter over and check out a few different plants. So we did. So we got to the carrots and we got some juice out of them. They read like a three. Ooh. Guess what? We did not have any carrots in that garden. They died. He ended up getting carrots from a, from a different colony. Okay, nature has something okay. going on there. One more thing on the grain here. Well, you squeeze long Ken, enough till you get a few Ken took there. these pits. Grain down here on the chart is 18 axons. Ah, we had. Plus a 25. We had this little thing going on, because because. So you didn't have no because then you didn't have no yeah. insect problems. No rust. No, no. Okay. So, so yeah. Do the saw flies, Ken? If they're attacking the plant, it's food source. <coughs> if you raise the sugar content, they can't process it. Pathogens, bacteria, fungi, insects. If they're there, they have a food source. You got to remember, if we alter something so that they can eat it, they'll show up. They just do. You know, you go out there and there's a squash beetle on this one, but not on this one. You go, where did it come from? It wasn't there yesterday, but it's there today. They show up. Okay, and I'm going to tell you how plants do this. Okay. So th this research was done back in the 50s. And so we're talking about now, we're talking about the, how insects decide who is food and who is not. Okay, same with pathogens. So I got this plant and Dr. Philip Callahan did this research back in the 50s. So this isn't new. This has been around for about 75 years. <coughs> 65, 70 years. And what they learned is plants emit frequencies. Okay, now is that possible? Okay, so if I turn on a radio, what's it doing? Okay, it's got a frequency and it's putting them out and I'm listening to it. Okay? So plants are absolutely no different than, let's come down here. I got this great big giant radio tower out here that's broadcasting this frequency. Okay? Mike over there, he's driving down the road and he says, oh, I'll scan up and down the dial. Okay? So I got 1700 on this end. I got 500 on this end, and so I'm just going to go up and down the radio dial. Oh, I got some gospel down here. That's good stuff, good stuff. Oh, good, I got a little jazz here. That's okay. Got a little orchestra down here. Oh, man, I got some good old country western here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got some rock and roll here. Oh, man, look at this. I got some bad rappers going on over here. Okay, so he goes up and down the dial, and he's picking up these frequencies. Well, insects do the same thing. Their antenna pick up the frequencies of a plant. Now, a plant has frequencies because of the nutrient compounds it holds inside, and every mineral in it has a different frequency. Okay, because we went back to our minerals. Remember, hydrogen has one proton, one electron. And it vibrates at a certain rate, and it makes a sound. We can't hear it, but it has a vibrational tone. Okay, helium is different. Lithium is different. But everything has a different vibrational rate. Okay, so 
as this stuff accumulates in the plant, this plant becomes an orchestra. I got calcium making this sound, and potassium making this sound, and zinc making this sound. I got all these cool compounds, and I'm putting out this blend of music. So if you listen to an orchestra, and half the bass section's gone, what does it sound like? Do you notice it? Big time. It's like something's not there. Well, the insects do the same thing. They interpret these signals to say, oh, there's food, there is not food. And that's why when they come in, they have already understood what the signal is in on this dial. And so they completely understand the nutrient content of plants this way. And so they are not going to come in and attack a very healthy high bricks plant because they can't process the sugars. They can't handle the complete compounds. So these low bricks plants have no flavor. They will not last in your fridge. They are going to spoil. They are going south very quick. And that's because there's nothing stable in them. And nature is saying, look, Guys, you really don't want to eat this junk. Us pathogens here are your best friend. We're going to tear this garbage apart before you should eat it. We love you guys. What we do is we smoke the pathogen and eat the garbage. We go, oh man, I can't figure out why I don't feel good. Okay, we do it all backwards. If we don't understand this system, these pathogens are actually a protective measure for our health, if we pay attention. So you gardeners, it's imperative that we get the minerals there, we get the biology there, and what you produce has a high nutrient content because that puts the health into the colony. The and pathogens are always this. out there, and if our plants aren't healthy, the plant's going to signal that. They're going to come in and do what they're designed to do. God designed pathogens with this program, and they're very good at what they do. They're going to take out junk plants. If we have a field of junk plants, it's because we haven't managed the mineral nutrition, and we haven't managed the biology. Because plants are not designed to grow yeah, well, we junk. got preventive fungicides, real fungicides, post-post fungicides, post-post-post fungicides. Yeah. I was wondering. You know, and what we're doing is, is we're just trying to keep a sick plant alive long enough to harvest it. Well, we don't harvest great grain from that plant. I promise you, if that's what we've had to do, <clears throat> you are going to have terrible carbohydrate structures in that plant. You're going to have half whipped proteins. You're going to have low mineral content. Your trace minerals are going to be rock bottom. And so when someone gets that seed and says, I'm going to plant this and grow a crop, he's already coming out handicapped. That seed isn't a good seed. And so if I'm going to feed it to my chickens or my hogs, how are they going to convert it into something that it's never there? So it all comes is how we start with these seeds. What we get into these things, because whatever eats them has got to have something to work with. And so if we're nursing sick plants all through the season, chemically sustaining them, you are harvesting the poorest of the poor. Because nature said, if you didn't interfere, I'd have come in here and helped you out a long time ago. I would save you from killing each other. Because you're not going to live on this stuff. So Ken, I was, I was going to have an hour. Did you tell them that, that what we did with the chicken, with healthy barley and healthy wheat, with, with all the minerals? With this high content stuff, you tell them. What we, what we did in the, the old chicken barn, we, we finally got rid of them. We took the winter barley that was sprayed, the liniment, that's the powder Ken was talking about, the, it was very high in manners, the barley and the wheat. So we fed it to these chickens. 
most most chicken coops are emptied in 75 to 80 weeks. These things went 95 weeks, and they were still at 78 percent when we got rid of them yesterday. And the reason we got rid of them, they, they didn't want them anymore. They don't want K3 eggs over at the egg plant, and they were still going through. And the eggs were hard, or were everything was. And Mike Miller over there, he's I can't believe. That's the way you do it is if we're going to use a poison, then put the microbes back so you get the protection and the nutrition transfer. The worst thing we can do is use a poison and then we don't do anything to help the plant recover from that. Well, we use a fungicide, but it only lasts 10 days to... You're, you're exactly right. To 20, you know. Yeah, and then if you have to use it again, you're spending another pile of money. And the problem is, if we put biology on there, it can last for months and months and months. That's what they do. We colonize the leaf surfaces. They get on there. They start to grow. They perform that protective barrier. But if we come back and we spray them with something like glyphosate that's a very potent antibiotic and it kills this stuff, then we break down the good population and we stimulate the bad guys and it actually accelerates the so potential here, for We're going to go through this really fast. Okay. Pathogens. Aha, we, we've already covered this. Okay. If I could live my life over again, I would devote it to proving that pathogens seek their natural habitat, which is diseased tissue, rather than being the cause of the diseased tissue. That is, mosquitoes seek the stagnant water but do not cause the pool to become stagnant. Okay, everything that lives out there has to have a food source. If there's no food for it, it can't live. So if there's a pathogen, the environment and the food complement the pathogen. Okay, Dr. Albrecht, who was the man who taught and trained Neil Kinsey? Okay. That's Neil Kinsey's guy. Absolutely, absolutely. Magnificent soil research on, on minerals is the presence of insects, disease, and pathogens in the field is not the reason for crop failure. These are merely indicators that the crop has already failed. See, you guys thought I was making all this stuff up. Okay, we go back here. Pathogens have to eat unhealthy plants. They have to eat nutrient deficient material. They do not have complex digestive systems. Everything has to be incomplete. And when you start looking at sugar formation, you can have all kinds of incomplete carbohydrates. Okay, they're not food for us, but they are food for pathogens. Okay, and when we get into the pH of plants, ideal pH for plants is here. The more acid we get, we increase the, the insects or the issues of disease in insects. The more alk if we get too alkaline, it, it's just that we've moved it out into the wrong zones. It's going to happen. Our bacteria, our fungi, our earthworm range is all in this middle zone. Okay? So, again. What is your ideal pH reading on a soil test? Well, it depends on what I'm growing. If I'm growing grass, I want a, a, a seven and a half or eight. If I'm growing blueberries, I want five. If I'm growing cedars, I want four. How about wheat? Wheat is neutral. It's seven. It's one to one. What about canola? Canola, same thing. It's a row crop, Dave. What do you mean one? One, one bacteria, one fungi, you're going to have a neutral pH. Your pH is going to be about six to what and a half to seven. On the, on the neutral pH? Oh, neutral pH is seven. Seven. Above seven is alkaline. Below seven is acidic. What if you got eight? And eight too? Well, you can still grow a plant. It's just that that pH will cause some mineral to not get into the plant quite so easy. But we can override a little of that with biology. Okay, there's ways to fix this. Okay, this is where we go back to the BRICS meeting, the BRICS reading. And so, where did our BRICS thingy go? Oh, you got it over here. Okay, so when we look at this, 
Okay, we take and we squeeze a strawberry into the Brix meter. Push the button, voila. Half a second, we get a number. 6.2, is that a good strawberry? Marty? I think so. That's a poor strawberry. That's a poor strawberry. Okay, it's not gonna taste very good. Look, it's got a little hollow heart there going on. Look, it's yellow, or it's got some white potassium deficiency. Not gonna do well. Okay, let's go back up here. This one is a little bit better, but look at the hollow part of it. Okay, calcium deficiency, not good. Okay, this is not natural. What they do with strawberries, and this is why you don't want to eat them, is they pick them white, bring them into a warehouse, hit them with ethylene gas, and what you get is the ethylene gas is a ripening agent. When your bananas go from yellow to brown, ethylene gas, okay? Right here, when you have this white core, that is a potassium deficiency. When you see a really sharp red line on a strawberry, when you cut it in half, what they've done, taken a white strawberry into a warehouse, hit it with ethylene gas, turned it red on the outside, it's white as the driven snow on the inside, and it will kill you. Scary. Over it, the next 60 years. Because <laughs> there's no nutrition in it. Okay? It's just not, the nutrition's not there, and the plant will tell you all about this stuff. Okay?